Okay, this is just a quick update to follow up on the stuff we were talking about a couple weeks ago with regards to uh, cardiac ultrasound. Um, we looked at all the views last time, and uh, right now we're just going to focus on the parasternal long apical four and apical five chamber, followed with a video on uh, how to get these views and to do some uh, calculations. So just recall that the um, in the parasternal long axis we have the indicator pointing towards the patient's uh, left hip or left elbow, and the, uh, the probe is right against the sternum. Apical four chamber, uh, and apical five chamber for that matter, we've got the indicator pointing to the patient's right. And this is all with the dot on the left-hand side of the screen, which is in the, um, <clears throat> the standard uh, radiology uh, configuration. So again, parasternal long, indicator to the left hip, and this is what it kind of looks like. And you get the parasternal long, you see left atrium, left ventricle, aortic outflow tract, right ventricle, and this is the interventricular septum, this is the posterior wall, this is that mitral uh, valve here, the anterior leaflet, and the posterior leaflet's down here. And um, this is just a normal uh, parasternal long axis of the heart, and with a quick overlay there just to kind of review some of the anatomy. Now the apical four chamber is uh, obtained by putting the indicator to the patient's, to the patient's right, and you're really going for that, uh, that the PMI, that little place there on the chest where the where the apex of the heart comes to the chest wall, and um, and this is. Uh, made easier when you put the patient to left lateral decubitus, as you're about to see. Now, to look at the mitral valve, uh, this is the best view of the apical four-chambered view, where we can see um, uh, BART, B-A-R-T, blue away, red towards. In this case, uh, during systole, there is a blue jet that moves away from where the probe's footprint is and into the left atrium. Now, I've, I've explained this before, but people get lost here a lot, so I think it's worth uh, reviewing that. So each time the left ventricle squeezes, as we put color flow Doppler over the mitral valve, uh, we can see a blue jet squirting back into the uh, left atrium. In fact, this blue jet hits the back wall of the left atrium, and that essentially uh, means that the patient has a mitral valve regurgitation. And we do this in the apical four, not the parasternal long, because recall that when you work with Doppler, you don't want the Doppler to be at a 90 degree angle um, with the uh, angle of incination. And in the parasternal long axis, um, when you look at the mitral valve, you're at about 90 degrees, whereas in the apical four chamber view, um, you're closer to uh, more parallel. The sound is more parallel with the flow of the blood, and um, you know, you're closer to um, an angle of uh, maybe 60 degrees. Uh, that's the idea. The more parallel you get, the better Doppler works. And this is just um, another example here of a blue jet hitting the back wall of that uh, left atrium. Not as pretty. We can see it here as well on this tricuspid side. So you can evaluate both the, um, the mitral and the tricuspid valves in that apical four chamber. And recall that to get the apical fifth chamber, uh, you just simply tilt the probe a little bit more anteriorly. But, um, you can see the, uh, ap the, uh, the apical fifth chamber. And I put air quotes around that because really it's just the um, the aortic valve. And this is where we're going to be putting that um, the pulse wave Doppler in order to measure cardiac output. And so how do we do this again? Uh, we start in the parasternal long axis where uh, here we can see that that valve is closed, the aortic valve is closed. And then we scroll along until that valve goes from closed to open. And then we measure the left ventricular outflow tract diameter. Again, this is at the parasternal long axis of the heart. And then you lock that value in to the computer, and basically it takes that value, the LVOT diameter, squares it times it by pi, divides it by four, and that gives you the LVOT area. Now, then you move into the apical uh, fifth chamber, which is uh, where we're going to put the pulsed wave Doppler, just right over that, um, right over this apical fifth chamber here, over that uh, right, right where that um, aortic valve is. Uh, and then um, you're going to activate the Doppler function. That's going to bring up a waveform. And, uh, and on uh, some machines, what you need to do is trace this envelope uh, using the cursor. Uh, on other machines, it's, it's automatically done for you. Um, it sees the waveform, and, and the software traces it itself. And that gives you the velocity time integral. This envelope is the uh, velocity time integral uh, of the left ventricular outflow tract. And that's, that's the idea here. So that gives you stroke volume. And um, so it's the LVOT diameter, which you supplied the machine. And then uh, you do the pulse wave Doppler over that aortic um, valve in the uh, apical five chamber. And that envelope gave you this uh, uh, velocity time integral. 
and then that gives you stroke volume. This equation gives you stroke volume, and of course we know that when you take stroke volume times it by heart rate, you get the cardiac output, and that's really what we're going okay, for. so I'm, I'm going to start with the P21 probe. I'll have the indicator actually point to the patient's left hip or left elbow, and I'm going to put it against the, or next to the sternum for a parasternal view, and I will put it right here, and the objective is to get a long axis view of the heart, so the indicator will be pointed towards the patient's left elbow. So on the screen right here, this is what I see. You can see that with each respiratory cycle, lung goes into the, into the ultrasound image. This is a pretty good view, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, let out, let out your breath. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to take a, a view right here. Why don't we have the patient um, take uh, breathe out? Okay. Right here. So what I'll do is I'll actually scroll back to when the actual leaflets are the, are open, and I think this is the maximal excursion right here. I'm going to hit calculations right here. I'll hit LVOT, oops, go back to cardiac output, hit LVOT, and it'll give me calipers. I'll put the calipers down right here, about right here, and that gives me a, a diameter of 2.2 centimeters or 2.19 centimeters. I'm going to save this calculation, and I'll go back to hit the back button right here. I'm going to unfreeze it now. And the next thing we need to do in order to calculate cardiac output is to have the patient roll to the left lateral decubitus. So I'll have the patient roll this way. So why don't you put your arm up above your head. And the next thing I need to do is I'll use, I'll obtain the apical four chamber view. And this is done essentially against the apex of the heart. So with my hands, the heart, I'm going to essentially try to scan from the apex all the way to the base. And my, my indicator is actually going to be pointed towards the patient's right. So I'll start right here. And let's see. So on the on the right of the screen is the left side of the heart, and on the left side of the screen is the right side of the heart. We have the mitral valve and the tricuspid valves here. I'm going to put, switch this to color Doppler mode right here, and take, uh, let, breathe out, Kevin. And what we'll see is we'll see flow through the mitral valve. So what you see also here is the aortic outflow track, and that's actually a five-chamber view right here. And the next thing I need to do is go back to calculations. <laughs> so I'll go uh, <laughs> mode 2D. Mode 2D. I can't okay. get that off of there. I can get a nice fifth chamber. That's as easy as it looks. Yeah. Okay. No. I know you're outside. I had to listen in a little bit to make sure I wasn't like. So we, we had the Kevin, patient. Where did go? We had the patient go left. So <laughs> on or somewhere. So we could. That's so we could cut out that segment where we're trying to find. <laughs> That's there. Yeah. Okay. So now continue. So let's see. Uh, see you later. So that's right. So we're going to go to mode, and we will do the Doppler. Point out the fifth chamber, so we can. So this is the fifth chamber right here. 
So we have the LA, the LV, and then this is the LVOT, and then this is essentially the aortic valve, and this is the fifth chamber right here. So you can see parts of the aortic valve. And so in order to get a cardiac output, we already had the left ventricle outflow tract diameter. What we're going to do next is we're going to measure the pulse wave Doppler, and based on the the spectral analysis, we'll be able to to get a, a get a, a approximation of the cardiac output. So I'm going to hit that. Actually, this is I don't remember this. Around right here, just where the valves are. Let's see. Page two, trace. Let's do a retake of that. <laughs> yeah, that's basically the idea. So we have a, a four-chamber apical view of the heart. This is the apex. This is the left side of the heart and the right side. We have the left ventricle, left atrium, right ventricle, right atrium. And we have our mitral valve right here and our tricuspid valve right here. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to put color Doppler through the mitral valve. You can see that essentially flow is towards the left ventricle and there's no regurgent jet that we can see on color uh, Doppler. Next, we're going to do a fifth chamber view of the heart. And let's see. Uh, almost there. Okay, so what we're going to do next is we'll actually do a, a pulse wave Doppler. So I'm going to hit the Doppler button of the fifth chamber of the heart. Remember the fifth chamber is your actual aortic outflow track, and this is your aortic valve right here. So I'm going to drop the gates right along the, right just proximal to the aortic valves right here, and then I'm going to hit Doppler. And I'll hit uh, go to page two, and I'll hit trace. And based on that, hit trace again. And based on that, we get an estimation of essentially we have his heart rate, we have his uh, stroke volume, and we have his left ventricle outflow tract. So therefore, we can get his his cardiac output, which is about four, three to four liters per minute.